listening to Late Night Leos. This is your host, Morgan Beebe of Thor Gecko. Tonight, I've got Nick Franklin, GNN Gecko. He's got this amazing story to tell of, like, this epic battle of breeding geckos and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, all that fun stuff that goes into it. And uh, today is really special because it's National Pet Day. So happy National Pet Day. Nick, you want to say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. How you doing? Oh, they're doing great, I'm sure. I'll just answer for them because they're all somewhere else. But <laughs> So let's just jump right into the history of how you got started. Like, is it a typical story everybody else has, or what's your special story? Um, you know, growing up, I never had any exotic pets. We just had dogs and stuff, and it wasn't until I was about 16, I, I wanted to, I just had the idea of, you know, breeding a gecko, and yeah. so I uh, I got a leopard gecko, two leopard geckos, a male and a female, um, and then I just, I, you know, I didn't, you know, they're good animals, I just didn't like them, they didn't click well with me uh, for whatever reason. And then, so I went to a local show here in Michigan, and I um I seen a crested gecko. A pair of them was for sale. I think I paid a hundred and fifty dollars for the pair. They were they were wow. a pretty low end pair. Um, and I got them. And that same day, I took the female home, and I was setting her all up. And she uh she laid an egg, and I just you know I think within another week I had two more of them. So it, it grew pretty quick from there. Wow, that's crazy. So, how old are you? Uh, right now, I'm 20. Nice. Okay, so so when you started, that was like literally four years ago. Yeah, yeah, I was 16. I, I just, I think I had got my driver's license like the month prior. Nice, nice. That's that's really cool because there's a, a ton of kids like even myself in high school like gecko started and stopped really quick. So like got out of high school and got my own place. So it's cool that you got to stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, um, you know, it's been difficult, but I really, you know, I really I really enjoy all the animals. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's important to do what you, what you, you know, what makes you happy and all that right. good stuff. Hello. So, hello? <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Um, okay. So, do you are you still breeding those original pair that you got, or did you just like w wash them out for some better, you know, upgrade your stock? Uh, no, the original pair um, I sold to a, a friend of mine. Uh, they're just they they aren't together anymore. They're just they're just his pets. You know, he he wanted a pet, and I and they weren't they were you know like I said a little lower end. So I gave them to him, and he just keeps them as pets now. Cool, cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure that there's any breeders out there that still have like original they bought in the beginning. But that's cool that you could send them off to friends, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I still get to see them on an occasion. It's um, yeah, they're they're in a good oh, home for cool. sure. Nice. So, what projects are you working on? Like, what are what are the big hot things going on over at GNN? Uh, right now, you know, we're focusing heavy on, um, extreme harlequins with, you know, a lot of pattern and a lot of cream, you know. I recently acquired, a Pimp C is his name. I got him from a friend, uh, Eslin. A lot of people in the community know him. Uh, you know, he's a really white, white gecko, and we're trying to get that into a lot of our projects. And, you know, just looking for a ton of pattern, ton of white coverage. Um, and cool. then we're working on uh, some tricolors, um, you know, you know, bunch of just different colors on animals, um, intense patterns. You know, we're we have a those are our two main projects, and then we have a couple other smaller ones we're working on. Cool. Now, are, have you been breeding those white ones for a while now? Do you have babies from that? Uh, the whites we did, we had one pair last year, or two pair, I'm sorry. Um, the one pair 
for whatever reason, the female hasn't produced yet. Uh, she was a little overweight, so we had, we're had working on getting her weight down. So we're hoping to get eggs from her this year, but we unfortunately get, didn't get any last year. But the one pair we had, they, you know, they, um, they, we have some holdbacks that are really um, promising. So we've only been doing that project since last year. So this is our first year. We haven't, we have, we just got Pimp C. Um, so we're really going to, this will be our really a big year for that, those projects. Cool. What is, what's one of those white ones caught? Cause I've been thinking about jumping back into crested geckos. So, uh, the white ones vary. I would say you're probably looking at spending around between 700 and, uh, twelve hundred dollars for for a really nice white uh a white gecko and um lily exotics had recently come out with the the uh lily white morph um i'm not exactly sure what they run but they are first morphs and crested geckos as i understand they're huh. they vary in color from extreme you know white to a little whitish yellow but i haven't actually seen one in person but those I'm not sure how much they run, but they're a really cool new thing that's coming out. Wow! And it, do you know if that's like a genetic morph? Like, is it recessive or dominant or something like that, or is it just like another line bred morph? Um, you know, I I I don't know exactly. I know that they weren't line bred. I read an article and he he didn't line breed to get them, but uh, I'm not cool. sure. You know. Um, a few people have hatched them. I think it's just like, I, I think, you know, 50-50, you know, like you'll, one clutch will have one and another one will be a normal. That's, um, that's, I haven't looked into them too much. You know, they just hit the market like the last three or four months. Wow. That's, that's cool. I mean, I, I really like the, I don't know if you've seen the Exanthic one. Yeah, yeah, Brian Butler at Altitude Exotics. Yeah, he has the Exantics. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, those are. I, those are extremely cool. Uh, I haven't, you know, had the chance to see them or, or anything, but, you know, I think that's going to be really cool. We'll start being able to work with real morphs and crested geckos, you know, with these two new morphs that are hitting the market. It'll be really interesting to yeah. see what happens in the next three or four years. Cool. Now, how long have you been doing the uh, Extreme Harlequins, and is that like a big, that's probably a big seller for you at shows and stuff, right? Uh, yeah, um, I like I said, I mainly, I started a little last year, and we're really this year we're focusing on it big. Uh, the last few years I've been doing uh, just, you know, tries and pins and uh, a couple white wall projects. Um, but, yeah, this year it's going to be our, our a pretty big year for the extreme Harleys with us. Cool. So, uh, we do have a question in the chat. Uh, they're wondering how many animals you have breeding. So right now we have about 35 breeding, uh, geckos, uh, 27 females. Uh, and wow. then we have a few other, few other animals. Uh, we work, we don't work with, you know, they're kind of like pets. We have a chameleon and then a couple morning geckos. Wow, that's, that's quite the, quite the collection. I used to have crested geckos and, I mean, they multiply almost as bad as leopard geckos. Yeah, yeah, they, we, uh, we've only started pairing up about two months ago we're already up to about like 30 eggs so you know this year's going to be quite a year wow and do you do shows do you go vending at shows and just for the listeners what shows do you go to um so we're going to start doing shows more we had just um, um started doing them so we do a show in indianapolis called the midwest reptile show i think it runs every second month um, uh, that we just were there this weekend. And then we're going to start one in Chicago 
which is about four hours from us. It's called the Scott Smith All Animal Expo, I believe. And then um, uh, there's one in Wisconsin that I think they run twice a year called Sewer Fest that we're probably going to do. But um, yeah, and there's another one down in Taylor, Michigan, that we are looking into doing. They sell out really quick, so we haven't had the opportunity to get a table yet. But um, we're definitely thinking about doing that one. Um, those that's pretty much all the shows we we do, and then we do Tinley, Tinley twice a year in Chicago. Um, we do nice. that. So you like travel to these shows because those aren't like close locations, are they? Uh, no, we live in uh, our our we're stationed in uh, Birch Run, Michigan. So, like for example, the Indianapolis show. We traveled four and a half hours to go there Saturday. We got a hotel and then been to the show Sunday morning. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm up in Northern California, so, like, just, you know, going 250 miles takes eight hours because you got all the trees that drive around and stuff. Right, that's, yeah. That's cool it's, that you're, yeah. Yeah, cool. You guys I, um, can I really, go to all these places. Yeah, I I enjoy traveling. Um, so it's it's not that bad, but sometimes the hours in the car they can wear on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially in the summer with the crested. Yeah, yeah. It um this weekend wasn't bad. You know, we uh, put on Pandora and listened to it, and sometimes they go by fast, but um it was a really nice day, so it was it was all right, but. Some sometimes driving is it's rough. Yeah. So since we're on the we or since we were on the topic of babies and all that stuff, can you run down like how you set up your hatchlings and you know, what kind of foods you give them and stuff like that? Yeah, um so our hatchlings when they're born, um, right out of the egg we put them in a uh, it's like like the size of a shoe box that you'd get at, you know, Nike or something. Um, we put them on a rack. Um, we give them a hiding spot, uh, and then we feed them our food, BFG diet, and then we give them doobie roaches twice a week. After they're about two or three months old, they get the doobie roaches. Um, nice. And then we just miss them once a day. Uh, you know, they, they live on paper towel. Um, we find that, um, you know, we... Offer them the BFG diet uh, two two times a week, and then we find that feeding the doobie really helps them gain weight yeah. um, a little quicker. That's cool. And what temperature do you keep them at? Uh, so for breeding, I I uh, bump the temperature up in the room to about. 74 to 75 degrees, but um, in the off season, it's uh, usually the room's right at 70 degrees. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, that I with crested geckos, that's the one thing I loved about them is I don't have to run the racks at like 90 to 94 to get them to you know really heat up and start breeding. Yeah, yeah. We no, we we don't deal with any of the the racks. I know that's some the thing with the leopard geckos and some snakes, but no, we just we put a heater in the room and that's that's about it. We don't want it too hot and not too cold. It's you know, they're pretty easy to care for compared to some other animals. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So what about the adults? Do they pretty much get the same feeding or how do you do that with them and what kind of shoebox do you use? Uh, so the the adults are in a it's either all access or easy access <clears throat> tubs by Rubbermaid. They're a front opening door. Um, yeah. We get the the medium size, um, and we drill a hole on the front door and on the top, and they're pretty much in there. Uh, hide lay box for the females, uh, and some you know um, vines and some hiding places. Uh, they get fed on Mondays and Thursdays, and then uh, Dubia's. Tuesdays and Fridays, and um, 
yeah, they're, they were all on the same feeding schedule. And then, you know, once a day missing, we missed them really good at night. That's really cool. Yeah, I love those uh, Rubbermaid all-access things. I use those with mine, and they're just amazing. Yeah, they, they're awesome. For a while, we used tubs that opened from the top before we <clears throat> had realized that they had that. And then as soon as I seen those, I, I bought one just to see if I'd like it. And then I immediately bought, I think I bought like 30 that day because they were just so nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only thing that I don't like about those is like I had this, this male named Juanita that would like crap on the front. And then every time you go to open the the door, the poop would somehow just like, it would move and then you'd close the door and it would fall on the shelf and it would just bug me so bad. I don't know. I don't know if they fixed that, but that was a few years ago and it yeah, still got um, there's, some and... issues. there's some issues yeah. with that. The poop seems to get stuck. Um, another small issue we had is there's a smaller size that we keep the juvies in. This I think the small, I think they're called. Uh, and I didn't realize that on the front there was a hole that they could crawl out of. So oh, I, didn't, no. I didn't fill it up. So I, I put the the baby in there, and I came back the next morning to see how he was doing, and he's gone. So I had looked around, and lucky he didn't go far. He was under a bin, like, you know, two or three feet away, and then I had to start sealing those from then on out. Yeah, yeah. I, I also noticed some, I think I've got the large one. Uh, my crested gecko likes to climb up between the tub and the 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 tub top, you know, where it kind right. of clicks together because there's like a, a little quarter-inch gap. So they like to kind of try to shove his face inside of his body in there, and that did not go good with stacking those tubs. Yeah, yeah, they um interesting to see, open those cages and see some of the positions they find themselves in. Yeah, yeah, luckily I didn't squish him. I opened the tub and saw he was there, but, yeah, it's definitely scary. What uh, I have an issue with is uh, you open the tub and there's like a rim right on the top there that um, yeah. I find that I, because I look and I can't find him and I have to run my hand along that rim and they'll, you know, yeah. nine times out of ten they're in there. Or I, I mean, sometimes they hide good in those things. I I tore them yeah. apart before and then you find them in some silly spot and it's like, how did I not see you the first time? Yeah, yeah, I I had that with, uh, I had hatchling gargoyle geckos in there, and they could just find some little place to hide, and then and then you lift up the top, and they, like, climb up on the other side, kind of like in a cartoon where the guy's under that hat or whatever, and the thing's trying to look for him. Oh, man, gargoyle geckos are crazy. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had some interesting you guys, experiences. Go ahead. Do you guys have any of those gargoyle geckos? Uh, gargoyles we do not work with yet. I'd like to, uh, work with them in the future. Uh, just haven't, haven't got into it. I'd really like to start working with the Chihuahua. Yeah. Um, Chihuahuas, and then, uh, we have one pair of Lichianus geckos that, um, nice. we currently have a, a GT mix high pink pair. They're, um, wow. they're a really cool animal. Yeah. That that is really cool. That I'm jealous. I'd love to get something like that, but I don't know. The leopard geckos just for me are easier because they don't need so much misting and stuff. I mean, I got a crazy job, so sometimes it's hard to you know deal with a tropical animal. Right. Yeah, the misting can be a pain. You know, we go through so much water that we're constantly having to refill our mister. It drives me nuts. I wish I could have a hose in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Actually, when I had crested geckos, I was thinking about doing like a agricultural misting, you know, where you would have a pump in a water reservoir. That way all the chlorine would be evaporated already. And Right, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I've thought about that. I just have so many that it would be, it'd be difficult to set something like that up. I thought about it, though, for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know, though. You know, like, uh, if you look online, Amazon has, like, uh, misters and drips and all that stuff. You get a pack of 50 for, like, 20 bucks. So, I don't know. It might be something to think, to look into. Yeah, definitely. I should look into that. It's sometimes, you know, when you get home at night, it's like you you just don't want to miss them, but you have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it can get pretty crazy. But, uh, yeah. Are there any new, yeah. Are there any new and exciting projects that you're going to be working with in Crested Geckos this next year? Uh, a project we're working on now, we. We bought these recently, uh, the um, Ridgeback project that um, Brian Butler at Altitude Exotics was working on. Um, we got a, a 1.3 from him. He ran a Thanksgiving sale, and um, I had always I had listened actually to the the uh, the talk where he was on, and uh, he had mentioned those, and I just always thought they were really neat. So we, you know, we got a 1.3. We've already got some eggs, so we're really excited to see what we can do with those. Uh, the Ridgebacks are the the one that have the they have the two pinning down the the two sides of the back, and then they have a another set of pinning that runs straight down the middle of their back. So uh, we're hoping wow. to develop yeah. that more and uh, see what we can do I with just that. Googled that. That is crazy. It's like a whole other lot like line of spine, the little uh, spiky things going down this bag. Yeah, um, the ones we have is, um, you can see them, they're definitely there, it's just a little harder, so we're breeding them with uh, uh, males that have really long crests, uh, for example, we have a male named Vidu who has extremely long crests, and then uh, Pimp C has extremely long, so they both got a female that we're hoping that somehow they relate to that'll make the, the, the middle one longer. Um, so I'm really excited to see. That's one of my uh, favorite projects we have going this year. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. I mean, as far as like, you know, if they use that term like a morphology because the crested gecko species would just have the two ridges. So I wonder if there's something like uh, from a wild caught bloodline that's in there creating that extra ridge. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know where the origin of them was, but you know, it's. Uh, it's. I don't know for whatever reason I just loved them as soon as I heard about them, and as soon as I he did a live video and he was showing them off, and I was in the comments like, yes, I need to get these. And as soon as he as soon as he said the price, I messaged him. I was like, I got to get these. Yeah, that is so crazy. And how you, yeah, you got a trio of those? Uh, yeah, we have one male, three females. So what we decided to do was take the male, breed it to one of the females, you know, just to continue that on. Um, so we have an egg from that pair, and then the other two went with normal males with just extremely long crest. And uh, we haven't got any eggs from them as of yet, but I think the female number two will be laying here within a week or so, so hopefully we can start getting some eggs laid from them and we can see what we have to work with. Wow. That's that's awesome. How much are those going to go for? Um, depending on the uh, the definition of the, the, the third stripe, um, anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on, like I said, the the third stripe and you know parents and if they're just a plain boring gecko or if they have you know pattern and they're a harlequin, it's uh, it'll be honest. I probably won't release any until I really work with the line for a while. But uh, yeah, that's that's where I yeah. think they would probably lie at. Wow, that's insane. I I might have to hit you up for some of those this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they are. They are. They're, we're really hoping to get some cool things out of them. Yeah, me too. That is just crazy. 
So we are running out of time, so I want to hit on a big fat gecko diet. Where is that coming from, and how did you end up with it? So uh, the big fat gecko diet was sold by a um, a lady. She made it, fed it to her animals for several years, and then um, started selling it. Uh, she has a, you know, she is much smarter than me. She knows how to you know, formulate the diets, and then uh, you know, she got a little older and was dealing with some illnesses, so we have, we had reached out, contacted her, and then um, we bought it. She lived in Florida, so we, you know, did most of the exchange, you know, through Messenger and uh, phone calls, and then uh, we got the diet recipe sent. We ordered a bunch of the ingredients. We took it, um, and we started, we started producing it. We had a facility made for it, uh, you know, so we could, you know, make it and have it very, you know, clean and organized. And, um, yeah, we started producing that, and, um, you know, it's comparable to the other diets on the market. It has slightly higher protein, and the Juvie and Breeder formula has 39% protein, so it really helps the animals tack on a lot of weight. Um Cool. The former owner, uh, you know, she always, she told me that she fed it for seven years and didn't offer any bugs to her breeders, and they did phenomenal. And, and if anybody knows BFG and the animals she has, you know, she absolutely has some stellar animals that she produced. Yeah, that's that's really cool. What does, uh, what are some prices for bags of that stuff? So uh, the BFG, we sell it in two ounces, which is $6. We sell it in eight ounces, which is $16. Uh, one pound is $30. Or two pounds are uh, 60 I, I, I'm pretty sure it's 60 I, I Gab usually works with the pricing. I, I, it is it, it is 60 and then we have a five pound bag which is 100. Nice. And do you do any like resale stuff like sell it to people that resell it at shows? Yeah we have a you know a, a, quite a few people who buy it and then they sell it at the show. I know I actually just shipped an order out to somebody in California today. So that'll be available in shows out on that side of the country. And there's a few people between here and there who are selling it. Nice. Do you guys have, like, sample packets? Is that something that you have? Or is that something that maybe you should start having? Uh, yeah, we don't have any right now. Uh, just the smaller two ounces is all we have. Um Okay. We never got around to having samples. We we have a few at shows, but um, we don't we don't sell them online or anything. The sample pack. Okay. Well, if you start doing that, let me know, and I could you know hand them out at shows here in California and make sure that you get your name out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a website uh, where we sell it. It's um, gngeckos dot com. Uh, it's available there. We that's where we post our food and some of our um, um, some of our animals we have for sale. We don't have very many animals on there. We just got the site up a few days ago. Right on, right on. And you of course have the GNN Geckos uh, Facebook page. We're right at the end, so I do have to thank you so much, Nick, for coming on. And it was great talking to you and hearing about this stuff and. I mean, I'm sure my, yeah. my wife's going to hate you because I'm going to be spending money on this, some crested right. gecko with yeah. an extra ridge going down its back. But <laughs> thank yeah, you so absolutely. much for coming on. And yeah. is there anything else right. you want to just yell out at the people real quick and, you know, anything, closing words? Um, You know, I don't have anything to yell out really at all, okay. you know. Uh, no, I don't have anything. I wish I could think of something cool to yell out, but I don't have anything. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we'll do it next time. So thank you so much, Nick, for coming on. All right, yeah, you have a good night. You too. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, bye-bye.
Bye. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I'm not sure if I'm still on the air. It disappeared. The blog talk's having some problems, but I haven't been dropped. So if I am still on the air, I want to thank you all for listening to Late Night Leo's number 57, 57 episodes so far. I know I started in 2013, and we kind of dropped off for a year and a half, but, you know, the main important thing is that we're back, and we're going to be doing Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. plan. I got a lot of stuff going on on the weekends, so, yeah, and... Maybe I'll go ahead and pick up a bunch of these uh, little packets, the, what do you say, two-ounce packets of uh, Big Fat Gecko Diet or BFG, whichever one you want to call it. Maybe we'll pick up some of that and we'll start giving them away. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, you know, maybe comment that you'd like to try some of that and we'll see what we can do to send some to you guys. So thanks for listening and we will see you next time.